Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. It is a joy to worship with each of you this morning. A few announcements before we get started. First is that UNW Day Circle, that is currently listed in the bulletin as meeting this Tuesday, is being postponed to next Tuesday, um, February 15th at 10.30 a.m. Also, night, night Circle, that was supposed to have met this past Thursday, has been rescheduled to this Thursday, and they will be meeting at 6.30 p.m. Also, Anne's Closet is in need of a few items. If you are able to donate them, we would be greatly appreciative. Uh, in two weeks from today, Open Table will be meeting at 2 p.m. And finally, it is hard to believe that Lent is less than a month away. Ash Wednesday is March 2nd, and we will be having an Ash Wednesday service here in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. on Ash Wednesday. Are there any other announcements this morning? As we gather for worship, it's important that you know that whether this is your first time or you've been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And it is a joy to worship with you this morning. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Great is the grace and glory of God. Give thanks with hearts of joy. Great is the strength and mercy of our Creator. Give thanks with hearts of hope. Great is the courage and hope of our Lord. Give thanks with the hearts of faith. Great is the mercy and compassion of the Holy One. We give thanks for the hearts of love. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 378, Amazing Grace.
and standing as we affirm our faith together through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
went out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to share parts of my call story with you all, but I wanted to share it again. As many of you know, or as all of you know, I grew up in the church, daughter of two pastors, granddaughter of another pastor, niece to two other pastors. And I have a distinct memory from my childhood. I was maybe in the third grade, and we had just moved from one church to another, had to move houses yet again. And I thought, I am never going to be a pastor because I am not going to make my future hypothetical children go through everything my parents have made me go through. The children are still hypothetical, but here I stand as a pastor. But that road was not necessarily as easily as Jesus saying, follow me, and me dropping everything and going. I went to the University of Evansville, studied athletic training, thought I wanted to do that. But in my senior year of high school, I was teaching the fourth grade, the four-year-old class at my mom's church. My brother and I were tag teaming it. There was only one child, but we had a blast. And there was one morning in April, right before I was to graduate high school and go to the University of Evansville, where I thought, oh my gosh, I've made a huge mistake. I thought, I shouldn't be going to the University of Evansville to be an athletic trainer. I need to be going to the University of Tennessee Chattanooga and studying education because this, this is what I should be doing. And then I quickly said, no, 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 that's not it. It's fine. I'm going to keep going forward. So then I worked at Cedar Crest when I was in college and again felt I shouldn't be doing this. This, this is what I should be doing. Camping ministry, working with these kids, enjoying my summers outside. This is what I should be doing. And then I would go, no, 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 that's okay. I'm still where I need to be. I'm still doing the right thing. You all know the end of the story because I'm standing here today. <laughs> but it took a long time for me to work out what I was being called to do. And even through this four-year-old Sunday school class and my time in athletic training and my time at camp, the common denominator, the common call in each of those has been my love for people and wanting to connect with them and support them and love them in the best ways I can. Each of us has a story of being called by God and responding to that call. Your story might be a little more like mine that took some wandering to get to, 
Or it may be like my classmates when I was in seminary who said, I knew I was called to ministry when I was 10 years old, and I have never wavered. There might have been a flash of understanding for you, a revelation after which your life was never the same. Or it might have been gradual, so that you can't even pinpoint when it started, but it has grown in you over time. And regardless of how your journey has gone, you have been called by God to ministry. You have begun your work in ministry, and it does not look like my work in full-time ministry. But you have been called and responded to the call. And this beginning point, this recognition, this moment of recognizing and responding to God's call is, as you won't be surprised to hear, deeply biblical. Isaiah's ministry began in the year that King Uzziah died. Jeremiah's prophetic mission began in the, area, in the era that led to exile. Paul's evangelism work began in a particular moment when a light from God struck him blind on the road to Damascus. And James, John, and Peter were called by Christ when he joined them on their fishing boats. There is deep significance and purpose in this text. James, John, and Peter were joined by Christ during their everyday, ordinary life. He joined them during their everyday routine. After joining Peter in the boat, he, ex he instructs him to put the boat out into deep water. They launch the boat and leave behind their carefully arranged security, their sure routines, reliance on merely their own ingenuity. And that too is what Christ calls us to do. When we are called by Christ, we recognize that, we, that that means going out into deep waters. It means leaving our comfort zones to rely more heavily on God. There's a TV show on the Discovery Channel called Deadliest Catch. And it documents the lives and challenges of crab fishermen on crab boats in the Bering Sea during Alaskan king crab and snow crab season. The work is incredibly dangerous and deadly. And in the show, we watch these boats easily tossed around by huge waves in water that is more than 12,000 feet deep. The episodes dive into the lives and backgrounds of a few members on the boats who are working and offer co often cover the greenhorns who are the rookie members on the boat. And one of the crew members on one of the boats named Edgar Hansen said of crab fishing, it ain't crab fishing if something didn't go wrong. If it goes perfectly, then you ain't doing something right. So often we feel as though being away from the security and the familiar means everything is going to go wrong. And sometimes that's exactly the case. We can easily replace crab fishing with life in that quote, and the sentiment would still ring true. It ain't life if something didn't go wrong. If it goes perfectly, then you ain't doing something right. With that simple replacement, we hear echoes of Peter's words after they have returned to the shore. He says, go away from me, Lord, 
for I am a sinful man. Go away from me, Lord. I am not worthy to be one of your disciples. Go away from me, Lord. If you knew the things I had done, you definitely would not be calling me. And yet, we have been called. We have been fully embraced by Christ who says, do not be afraid. After launching into the deep waters, Jesus then instructs him to let down their nets. They have been unsuccessful all night in catching fish, so they don't anticipate being successful now. But the nests, the nets are cast and are met with abundance. The nets are cast into the deep waters, putting their faith in a man who is just teaching on the shore and join them in their boats. They cast their nets and are unable to pull them out on their own because there were so many fish in their nets that they began to break and their boats began to sink. What does it look like for us to cast our own nets into the deep waters? What does it look like for us to take the step? It feels vulnerable. It feels intimidating. It feels out of our comfort zone. But we know that when we are willing to take that risk, when we are willing to respond to the risk that God is calling us to take, we are always, always met by Christ. We are never taking this step on our own. Christ is in the boat with us. And we are always met with abundance. Finally, Peter, James, and John leave their nets, their boats, and follow Christ without hesitation, without question. They leave their nets and follow. For our closing hymn this morning, we're singing the summons, which is one of my favorite hymns that we would sing at camp. And the, the final verse says, Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. When we turn and follow Christ, we are stepping into the unknown. There are things we have to leave behind, but we are never the same. When we respond to, God, to God's call, we begin to live into the potential that Christ sees in us. When Christ calls us, he is looking beyond the things <coughs> of our past. He is looking beyond all of our shortcomings and failures. When Christ calls us, he is calling us. Just as he has called us beloved, just as we have been created in God's own image. And so may we be brave and bold and humble in answering the call and stepping out in faith. And may we be met with abundance. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering.
Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks for the abundance you provide, for the gifts you have given us, and the calling you have placed on our lives. May we now return to you what you have given to us, and may it be used to further your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, we have a few prayer requests we want to lift up. We want to remember Jim Page, who is at St. Thomas in Nashville. Yesterday, he underwent surgery, and they took a liter and a half of fluid off of one of his lungs. And they're also worried about how he had heart surgery a few weeks ago, and they're worried about how his incision is healing. He has also had COVID. And so we want to remember Jim this week. We also want to lift up Carolyn Hendrickson, who fell over Christmas and is having an injection in her spine to hopefully avoid surgery and help with some pain. Are there other joys or concerns we would like to lift up this morning as a community? Phyllis is thankful for the beautiful day we are having today and that we did not get the ice that was predicted and that hopefully warmer weather is around the corner. <laughs>
so when you stop in the middle of the road and look again, because you don't every day you see a baby walking down the road, and it, sure enough, it was a little girl, absolutely stunning little angel. She was beautiful. And um, we tried to communicate, and she was too young to really tell us a point where she lived. So we ended up calling the police and waiting, and they came, and a couple of hours later, we found out where she belonged. Uh, her babysitter was gaming, and it got quiet. They went to check on the little girl, and she had just walked out the back door. So, you know, by the grace of God, he put us there to find that little angel. And I mean, my first question is, could I take her home? Because she was just adorable. But we got her back to her safe environment, and her dad from came from work and, and took care of her. We pray for that little girl who is amazing that she was not injured as she was walking down the road. And we give thanks that Peggy and Mike were there to help re help start the process of reuniting her with her family. And we also pray for the babysitter. <laughs> that, yes, sometimes we make the wrong choice. Sometimes we get focused on things other than what we should be focused on. And that happens to each of us. And so we want to pray for them and their, the guilt, I'm sure, that they feel, the responsibility, and their healing. Because that is a scary situation no matter what. Are there any others this morning? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for the sun shining, for the warmth it brings. For God, we lift up to you prayers for our community. Prayers for our members who are in pain and recovering and in need of your healing grace. Oh God, we pray for <coughs> forgiveness and hope and peace. We pray that we might hear your call more clearly. And we pray for strength to respond to that call. Oh God, we know that you are with us. That there is nothing we ever have to do alone. We do not take steps of faith alone. that you are walking with us. You are in the boat with us. Oh God, continue to reveal yourself to us that we might be your hands and feet in the world so that all might know your unending love and know that they too have been called beloved. And for that, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we come to the table, we remember that this is Christ's table. It is not my table or your table or the church's table. But it is Christ's table. And at Christ's table, all are welcome no matter what. As we take communion today, our ushers will direct you forward and you are invited to kneel on the altar. 
and our servers will bring you the bread and the cup and you're invited to take and then I will dismiss you with a blessing. Any offering left on the, hand, on the altar rail goes to our Healthy Hands Fund that helps to assist our community members in need. And so I invite you to join me on page 12. The words will also be on the screens. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us when we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, our Alpha and our Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through the prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ who called you Abba, Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own and filled, with, filled them with a longing for a peace that would last and a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead the same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, marking us as the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. that we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood. As the grain and grapes, once dispersed in the field, are now united on this table in bread and wine, so may we and all your people be gathered from every time and place into the unity of your eternal household and feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, the unity of the Holy Spirit and all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many partake in the one loaf. The bread which we break is sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. At this time, I invite those assisting in communion to come forward. The table is set, and all are welcome.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have revealed yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 2130 from the faith, faith we sing, The Summons. Please stand as you are able. Thank you. 